Hello and welcome to the Print Polygraph with our political editor DK Singh. Now, Parliament was in session this week. The second half of the budget session began on Monday. And in what has almost become a norm in the recent past, both houses of the Parliament remained largely disrupted. The Rajya Sabha and the Lok Sabha saw almost no discussion with the BJP demanding that Rahul Gandhi apologize in the House for his comments in the UK and the Congress demanding that the government form a joint parliamentary committee to investigate into the Adani issue. But who does this disruption benefit? Who does disrupting parliament help? The opposition or the government? DK is going to be analysing this for us today. And of course, as per usual, we will also be taking your questions on the same. DK, thank you so much for joining this show. Firstly, let's get into the first question. Who does it help? Why is this a trend that we have been seeing increasing in the past uh, you know, See, for one past line, years. any disruptions of parliamentary proceedings help the government. Hmm. Because that's the best opportunity for the opposition to seek accountability from the government on a host of issues. I'll come back to that uh, later. To start with, uh, you know, the issues which have actually led to these disruptions. And I'm going to talk about the fallacies of the arguments from both sides. Hmm. So look at the government's argument, argument first. Because this time disruptions are being initiated by uh, the treasury benches. Mm-hmm. So it's about Rahul, uh, Rahul's remark that you know democracy is under threat in India mm. because he said it in London. They are saying by saying that on foreign soil, you have discredited India, you have defamed India, in their parliament, in the judiciary, all institutions. Now, first of all, I would like to say you know uh, India is too big. A power. I mean, it's a you, one individual's remark does not make or mar our country's global stature. So you don't need to have those insecurities. I mean, we are too big a power to be, hmm. you know, affected by anybody's remark. Secondly, uh, you know, in digital era, where you are saying what doesn't really matter anymore. The ge- hmm. geographical hmm. locations don't really matter. So hmm. somebody making a statement or tweeting something say in uh, Sonbhadra in uh, Uttar Pradesh hmm. would be heard by somebody sitting at, at the North Pole. Hmm. It's a digital era. So that geographical location, let's forget about this. Hmm. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, you can flay him, you can criticize Rahul Gandhi for being an alarmist. Hmm. For exaggerating things. But not being nuanced like a lot of people. Are yes. So, you can flay him for that, but then again, he is not the first leader to say that on foreign soil, as you, you yourself did that story. Now, starting from, say, uh, 1977, when Moraji Desai was there. Hmm. So, he said in an interview to Time magazine that, you know, uh, Indira had a dictatorial temperament. Hmm. He, he said Nehru was a believer in Machiavelli, hmm. while I believe in uh, Lincoln and Gandhi. Then, in an interaction with the American president Jimmy Carter, hmm. the details of which came out in a, a declassified document later, he was basically saying that you know uh, that the nuclear test done by the Indira Gandhi government was wrong. It was a wrong move. Yes. That was our prime minister talking on foreign soil. Hmm. Come to uh, say, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So we have heard how many times when he was saying in South Korea that you know it. Earlier, people used to think that it was they must have committed a sin in the past life that they were born in India. What kind of government is this? What kind of country is this? To hmm. say that you know people were ashamed of being born as Indian, I mean, how do you judge that? Hmm. Then in, again, in another uh, place, he said, you know, now it's it's no more a scam India. Hmm. Then he would say, you know, how corruption has hollowed India. The termite, it's a termite which has hollowed India. All these remarks made on foreign hmm. soil. Hmm. So, you know, people do speak outside. It, it's not just about insulting the country. Just because you are raising some domestic concerns on foreign soil. So that's mm. my take on what the BJP is doing. But, you know, BJP also knows that. Mm. But the fact is, it is helping the BJP uh, somehow get away from this entire mess over this Hindenburg report. Mm. Mm. Because the opposition was already planning to raise it all over again in the... Mm. In parliament and it helps the BJP hmm. somehow uh, divert the entire thing. Hmm. As for the opposition's uh, stand, again, 
a whole lot of fallacy when you're talking about this Adani scam. Now, Supreme Court has already set up a committee. Hmm. And look how you're projecting yourself. You're looking so divided. Hmm. Now, from, there, from that, that march uh, from parliament to the ED office, you did not have Trinamul Congress with them. You write a letter to the ED, uh, Tirana Congress doesn't sign. Even NCP mm. doesn't sign. They NCP don't turn up for the meetings in Kharge's room in yeah, There are so, anymore, so many yeah. contradictions. Now, you look at this, uh, you are talking about ED and CBI, their misuse. And here, your party leaders in Delhi are writing to the Lieutenant Governor, saying that, you know, CBI and NIA should be investigating this entire snooping case against uh, the Kejriwal government. You are demanding an investigation by CBI and NIA, the agencies you have been criticizing all through. And then you are saying that, you know, uh, talk, they are talking about slap sedition charges. I mean, mm -hmm. you basically under these laws, you investigate them under sedition, sedition laws, under uh, UAPA. So look at the fallacy of uh, the opposition's argument. Mm -hmm. No, they want a JPC probe, probe uh, into this entire Adani affair, joint, probe, joint parliamentary committee. Mm -hmm. Now, how, what will it serve? Supreme Court has already set up a committee. Mm -hmm. Now, if you remember this JPC on 2G, so-called 2G scam, hmm. what happened? What was the report? The JPC was headed by Congress leader PC Chako. Hmm. And the JPC's final report submitted to, to the House, the final report rubbished all the allegations, hmm. saying that you know, the Prime Minister was misled, then saying that you know uh, all this, this figure, CAG's figure of 1.76 lakh crore loss was ill-conceived. Basically, rubbishing the all, rubbishing all, all the findings. What happened in that uh, JPC, uh, JPC report? And now again, you are asking for JPC. What purpose will it serve? Again, it will have a majority of members. It will be headed by BJP MP. It will have a majority of uh, members from uh, uh, the, the, the ruling side. side huh? So, what do you expect? What happened? Aren't you learning any lessons from the JPC on 2G? What you did then, and what you should expect now? So this. Entire demand, you don't know what, what, what are you demanding and what for? Because you are not getting really any resonance from the ground. And still you are persisting with it and you are playing into the BJP's hands. Now look, there are so many things to talk about. Now in this session also you have not heard anybody talking about unemployment, price rise, poverty, price rise, the issues you thought would really nail the government. Now uh, I think on Monday there was uh, an answer by the government which said that you know uh, the agriculture department failed to spend 44,000 crores allocated to it in its budget. Mm. Now, agriculture ministry is not able to spend 44,000 crores in three years, while your target was to double the farmer's income by 2022. But nobody is bothered in the opposition. Mm. And this is where, you know, when you have a parliament session on, you have to seek accountability from the government. Mm. These were the issues you should, be, you should have been raising. Mm. But you are just ignoring all that. Hmm. And just talking about this Hindenburg report, hmm. on which there are many question marks anyway. And the Supreme Court has set up a committee. Hmm. And that committee is headed by a retired Supreme Court judge. You have many eminent, eminent name, names there. K.V. Kamath, Nandan Nilekini. So let it be. So from both sides, you know, you may look at it as a dance of democracy. Hmm. But it's, this dance is looking so bizarre today. No, but DK, if I could ask you, so this specific session, of course, we can largely agree that the first offence, so as to speak, mm. was made from the Treasury side. But what we have seen earlier also, mm. we have seen that the opposition, especially the Congress, has gone out of the way to disrupt the uh, exactly. House. Yes. And this has happened in the last session, the session before that, exactly. it's become a kind of pattern. Yes. So, when it is with helping no, the with, government, with no why is the opposition impact. doing this? Exactly. So, when it's helping the government, why is the opposition doing this? Somebody, what somebody, the somebody, has to, somebody has to explain. So, for instance, you wrote that piece, three reasons why Congress thinks that this anti-Adani campaign will hmm. not meet the same result hmm. as Chokidar Chodha campaign. Now, you can oh, talk about funny. it, in fact. You can tell our viewers what are the three reasons Congress thinks it's doing better than what they did earlier. So, well, oh. uh, one of the first reasons that the Congress thinks is that they said that the mm. Rafale scam, when they went with it, it was one specific issue. Mm. But their argument is, for example, if you look at the Congress, the allegations, corruption allegations against the Congress, it was not just CWG, it was not just 2G. Mm. It was a bunch of issues that came together to, you know, put that kind of tarnish on the mm. Congress that it's a corrupt government. So, they are saying that the Adani issue, unlike Rafale, will possibly lead to more such 
charges coming out of the closet. Mm -hmm. So it's just the beginning, it's not one issue, that's their thing. Mm -hmm. So that will build up and mm -hmm. kind of take this halo away from Prime Minister Modi. So that's, that's the first thing that they are thinking. Mm -hmm. Second, they are saying that, which I found very interesting, is that there's some kind of corporate isolation that they are trying to do with Adani. So the idea is that if they play to the corporate world, that one corporate entity is getting benefits and the others are not, then those who are not will side with the Congress and mm -hmm. also, you know, as they say, supply you with more details against Adani to kind of build him up. And all of this, of course, because they think that there's a clear connection between Prime Minister Modi and uh, Mr. Adani. Third, they are saying is that the small traders who the Congress has been trying to reach out to through its protest against the GST, for example, mm -hmm. right? Keep chote business khatam ho, ho gaye, chote vyapar khatam ho gaye. So they are saying that if the small traders see their business is failing, but at the same time there is this one man who is doing really well when everyone mm -hmm. else is failing, mm -hmm. that means there is some kind of collusion. Mm -hmm. So that they are saying the small traders will, you know, come on their side. But how is how are you communicating any of this by not speaking in parliament and by not talking about these things in parliament. So, you know, their, their argument would be that we are not being allowed to speak. Fair enough. But coming back to the main, uh, what you see like, hmm. is their reason for this, that they would be able to nail the prime minister. What's there in Hindenburg report that directly connects the prime minister hmm. Hmm. with whatever purported alleged uh, hmm. misdeeds by any company? Hmm. It's by insinuation. Hmm. That okay, you may, you are, what you are saying, you are a friend of Adani hmm. and by insinuation, by extension, you are doing all this. Where is the evidence? And knowing how popular the Prime Minister is even today. You need hard evidence to nail you him You don't down. have any, any evidence to actually nail the government on this. Hmm. And this is where whatever the Congress is trying is not really working on the ground. Hmm. Where are the investors? If investors have been hurt. Hmm. Do you see investors on the street? Hmm. And Who? this whole LIC so, SBI angle, we have done a story on this by hmm. our economy editor hmm. Sharad Raghavan that if LIC was were to sell its stocks in Adani hmm. right now, it will actually be making a profit of hmm. over 11,000 crores. Hmm. So that also, I mean in a, in a sense again, when I was speaking to Congress people, they realized that this aspect was kind of like this propaganda to get hmm. it to connect to the you know average person hmm. who has a LIC policy. But that also they are not they are not doing the propaganda properly. See, I, I so not make the judgmental thing. call on the report. And opposition, if it wants a debate in parliament on this, hmm. I think why not? Hmm. There should be a debate which the government is avoiding. That hmm. apart, what I am suggesting here is the Congress's strategy is flawed. Hmm. You are not, you have been disrupting parliament and your entire focus in the past several weeks hmm. has been on the Hindenburg report. Hmm. Are you getting any resonance from the ground? Hmm. People who are who you think would support you on this hmm. are nowhere to be seen. So why are you making so much halablu over this when you are not seeing any ground swell on this issue? Yes. Right. As a part of, as an electoral strategy, I'm talking about. As, as a political party, you have to see whether people are there with you. Hmm. I'm not getting into whether something is right or wrong hmm. in the Hindenburg report. Course, huh? So, actually, Aditya has a question, something along similar lines. So, I mean, as we were discussing, and you know, whether or not you should, you can and use the opportunity to nail the government in parliament. So, Aditya is asking, uh, DK, don't you think raising is issues related to national interest and participating in debates is a better way to present yourself as a bi viable alternative to the present government instead of raising them in some other forum? By halting parliament session, opposition parties are itself playing in the pitch of the BJP as BJP uh, will present these parties as one halting and disturbing national progress. You know, Aditya himself has explained it. I am explained it very well. I do not have to answer. It is a self explanatory question. Hmm. He is absolutely right. In, Do right you think the BJP is going to use this against the opposition it, it, and say it, you it, are disrupting? It always, has, it always has that you are so negative. Hmm. Your entire campaign is uh, based on ne negativity. Hmm. You don't want to discuss anything, you run away from parliament, you disrupt it. Now, opposition may be making all, whatever allegations they may be. Hmm. But the image that every time parliament session starts, opposition is going to disrupt hmm. on one pretext or the other. Hmm. That is gaining ground. Hmm. So, Sankar, uh, another one of our members is asking you, he is saying, hello DK. Generally, one would expect the government to be on the back foot, but strangely, strangely, the principal opposition party finds itself in a soup thanks to its leader. 
This reminds me of Advani's Jinnah is secular remark. BJP was left high and dry for months and Advani was cut to size. Previously, Modi used Rahul's beehive remark to full effect. It's unlikely he'll pass by this ammunition either. Do you think by ducking the BJP's allegation and overselling the Adani cocktail, the Congress is allowing BJP to discredit Rahul and reaffirm his Pappu image? I wouldn't say Congress is allowing it, but this is what the BJP is trying to do. Hmm. And the initial part of the question, when he is talking about Congress talking, uh, just trying to talk about his leader, what the leader has said, what the leader has done. Mm -hmm. And that's why Cong the Congress is hurting itself. The focus doesn't have to be Rahul because the BJP is attacking Rahul. You are playing into your hands, trying to counter attack. Mm -hmm. And the entire debate has become focused on Rahul. Mm -hmm. While your debate should have been focused on issues concerning the people. Hmm. And that's where the Cong Congress's biggest flaw, uh, the biggest flaw in their strategy is. Before I take the next question, so hmm. from Monday to Thursday, the, I mean, the Congress's demand was JPC for Adani. Hmm. Then on Thursday, Rahul Gandhi came to parliament. He apparently spoke to the speaker, said I need to speak hmm. because ministers have uh, raised allegations against me. And today, right before the house was adjourned, hmm. the sloganeering that was happening was Rahul ji ko bolne to. So, do you think that for the next of the session, the focus from JPC for Adani will shift to Rahul Ji? I can, uh, look at it from the con Congress's angle. What the Congress is trying to do is that if you don't allow me to speak in the house, that proves Rahul's allegation that the democracy hmm. is under threat. Hmm. And, and they think that probably the BJP will not allow them to allow him to speak in the house hmm. because he will again start talking about Adani and making hmm, all kinds hmm, of hmm, hmm. allegations. Hmm. But you are getting into a uh, a different terrain here. Hmm. You are again getting into the ruling side's trap. Hmm. Hmm. Point is, whatever explanations you have, you say it outside hmm. and get over with it. You communicate to the people because day in, day out, BJP leaders, ministers, everybody is saying how you have discredited India, how you have sullied India's image. Hmm. Now you correct that perception at least if you think you didn't, didn't do anything wrong. Hmm. Just by making it a procedural issue that I will speak in parliament only because you think the BJP will not allow you, hmm. that's again is a very naive strategy hmm. in fact. True. Uh, there is a, a more generic question that uh, hmm. Priyanka, Priyank Upadhyay, who is again one of our subscribers, he uh, he's asking any particular reason we don't see senior ministers at the CCS level talking much in parliament. Very recently, we saw Rajnath Singh taking up the Rahul Gandhi issue. Uh, no, they do. Uh, look, when you talk about CCS, uh, you have Amit Shah speaking, although you may say that okay, ministers of state for home affairs take mm. up most, most of the questions, because mm. you know, these parliamentary questions, answers, it, it takes a lot of time. Mm. And the cabinet minister, say Amit Shah, for instance, he has a lot of other work. Mm. And it's not something so sensitive. If there is something sensitive, something very serious, then probably Amit Shah himself would come. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, some MPs have asked you questions. Your junior minister can go mm -hmm. and respond to that. Mm -hmm. you know, otherwise, they have been coming. Whenever there are important issues, say uh, Nimala Sitaraman, whenever mm -hmm. she, the finance minister needs to speak, she speaks. She speaks yes, true. You have Rajnath Singh, whenever the defense minister when he wants to speak, uh, he has to speak, he speaks. You have even Jashankar talking. So, I think to say that CCS members are not speaking uh, is, not, is not correct entirely. Okay. Uh, there's one more question which is actually on the article that we had written on the three reasons, you know, Congress thinks its campaign mm -hmm. is going to work, Adani campaign is going to work, which we, which we were just, just discussing. So, Sankalp is asking, um, he's read our article, he's saying, firstly, to think that a party that has set its own house on fire will be able to pull off a triple whammy like the one mentioned in the article, to put it kindly, is a tad ambitious. The fact that the project is headed by the same old failed team of 2014 and 2019 of the Congress inspires even lesser confidence. The next is his question. He's, say, he's asking, do you think the Congress is a prisoner of group thinking? And I mean, I will respond to that, but if you could answer that question too. First part, would you say, uh, to expect that these, reg these regions are, uh, what, what are you saying? Are they, uh, He's he, saying that a party which set itself on fire in Punjab and which still has the same leadership as it did in 2014 and 19, how will they pull off this triple whammy? The triple whammy again based on what? Mostly based on assumptions. I mean, hmm. as you, the three regions they have cited to you hmm. for persisting with this. Hmm. Look at those regions to think that They're a, not a part of the corporate world yeah. will su start supporting you because 
you are targeting uh, one of the big ones hmm. small traders the big, biggest one small traders will come to support you these are all very uh, i would say misconceived notions and hmm. I would say it's uh, not empirical. In, in yeah, it's it's just terms. your wish that it happens. It, it doesn't happen like that. Well, what is the evidence on the ground, or what mm. is the evidence you've got that these people will come to support you? Mm. Because day in and day out, you keep uh, keep targeting the corporate world. Mm. You keep trying to create the debate like rich versus the rich and the poor, mm. and how this government is helping the rich. Mm. Now, now you expect a section of the rich to come to your support <laughs> because you have started targeting somebody else. <laughs> I don't know. So one it's point so we actually <laughs> made in the article was earlier it was Adani Ambani Modi ke mitra hai. Now mm -hmm. Ambani seems to be, I mean we can't find him. Congress also doesn't seem to be able to find him somewhere. So maybe strategy, maybe generally for the Hindenburg report, but it's an, it's an observation. I would say it's a very nice wish <laughs> of the opposition. Hmm. How it works out finally we will see, uh, we are seeing already the impact. Hmm. Next few weeks, next few months, they all they will also realize. So before coming here, a couple of hours before I came here, I was just sitting with some opposition MP, and he was also like, "What do you do if the younger man wants it? Young man, I would say, quote unquote. <laughs> I mean, he has to be supported. We have to do it. Who is bothered, boss, about all these things? <laughs> I mean, the Hindu report. How do we explain to the people? But okay, fine. You want to do it, do it. And so we are doing it. So the opposition camp itself is totally." Split on this, and not mm. just within the Congress. Look at how TM, TMC is not supporting mm. them. TMC mm. has a different issue of altogether because you are targeting Mamta Bayer, you should support mm. you. Mm. But then again, on JPC also, TMC is not with them. Mm. TMC is saying court monitored proof. Yeah. TMC is okay with that. And, and that that also is strange because court has already ordered a probe committee has already been set up. Mm. So this discordance, this incoherence in opposition mm. camp, it is something that should be. You know, teaching them a lesson, they, they should realize what's happening. Just they are going with the flow without realizing how things are actually. That nothing is actually progressing yeah. for them in real yeah. terms. There is a second part to Sankalp's question. He's asking my issue with the campaign, the Adani campaign, mm -hmm. uh, is not with the campaign itself, but with the flawed assumption that the BJP will somehow crack. Even a small emotional speech by, speech by Modi could fizzle out the Adani campaign. Why the obsession with Burying Modi's image has Rahul taken 2014 too personally? Now, Sankalp, if I understand your question correctly, mm. it's something that we have discussed before, DK, which mm. is the personality contest between Modi and Rahul. Mm. And whenever that has come to the fore, we know who the clear winner has been. Mm. So, I think Sankalp, that's the question he wants to ask. That again, this Adani campaign is showing that Modi has apparently clear links with Adani, mm. so it's a direct attack, attack on the Prime Minister, not on the BJP or the RSS. Yeah, clear. And BJP will so, be happy about this. Hmm. BJP knows all these attacks, when you are targeting the Prime Minister, it doesn't really work. And especially when you are talking about corruption, hmm. it will not stick. Hmm. Because you are talking about Modi. Hmm. It does not stick anyway, you don't have any evidence. Hmm. Coming to Rahul versus Modi co co contest and the, what, the way the Congress is trying to project hmm. it, you are right. But somewhere I think the idea is to project Rahul as the principal challenger of Narendra Modi. Mm -hmm. That would be one part of the kind of principal challenger where I am the person attacking the RSS, I am the person attacking Modi. So mm -hmm. anybody who is not happy with Modi should be voting for me. Mm -hmm. That's one part. Another part is if you have known Rahul and you talk to Congress leaders, they will tell you. It's about, you know, when he talks about ideological war, ideology also he, he thinks is uh, personified. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I stand for the Congress. I stand for everything the party hmm. is talking about. I, me, and my, hmm. and that's and I'm the only hmm. person who's ever stood against Modi. That is also exactly. a gender. So th hmm. that's the message, and it's not working out. But somehow the Congress people are convinced that you keep doing the same thing, hmm. and somehow there will be a different result someday. Okay, DK. Before we wrap yeah. up, uh, one final question I wanted to mm -hmm. take to you. So the last session of the Parliament, the first half mm -hmm. of the budget session. That's where we saw Rahul Gandhi give his almost 51, 57 minute speech on the Adani issue, which was actually quite well received, um, yeah. you know. And then the BJP was responding to it, Prime Minister Modi responded to it in both houses. Mm. And generally when discussion was actually allowed to happen, there, mm. were, there was actually so much that was coming out of parliament. And, mm. You know, as a journalist, there was also so much to report on f mm. for, for us. Um, in the run up to 2024, there's one year left. Um, how important do you think these parliament sessions are going to be, especially for the opposition? 
and what should their parliamentary strategy be like? Like, should they um, learn from the fact of Rahul's speech last time and see the kind of impact it had and push towards speaking more in parliament see, or is disruption the way? First of all, Rahul's speech, I'm coming to that speech, uh, I really liked it, not for the hmm. contents of it, but the confidence he was showing. Hmm. For all those years that I've watched Rahul in parliament and this was hmm. his best speech in the way that he was looking very confident and he knew what he was talking. And again, I'm not talking about the contents, hmm. the way he was delivering his speech. Hmm. That was fine. And the government was actually on the back foot. The treasury benches were on the back foot. Mm. And mm. so you saw a big, big pushback. And mm. the Prime Minister himself came out and rebutted it. Yeah, and the top ministers fine. were... But, but that was a reason for worry mm. because he was trying to make an impact. And he was to an extent he was getting successful also. But then after that, you go abroad mm. and do something else. Where is the consistency? If you wanted to keep the heat on the government mm. for whatever issues you have raised... You have to be around and do it consistently. Mm. It, you cannot be doing it like, you know, on weekdays I will do that, on weekends I will go on chutti. And par parliamentary strategy is not followed like this, or political strategy, it's, mm. it cannot be a political strategy. You think he should have been in parliament from the beginning, this time? Of course, and he should have been from back Monday. here. There was no need, why are you speaking in London? Go to Godakpur University and talk. Mm. Go to Patna University and talk. And speak in DU. Yes, so democracy is under threat, do it here. Mm. This is where you see the dichotomy between what he thinks and what many of his other party colleagues think. They don't agree with him. He probably needs to sit with them, not from the position of power, just to learn as to what they think is going wrong with his strategy. Mm. Mm. But that he will not do. And the opposition strategy in the run-up, uh, in parliament in the run-up to 2024. At least they should stop follow? these disruptions. This time they are being provoked, you can understand, mm. because the other side doesn't want the debate. Uh -huh. But still, you have to try to be a constructive op opposition. Instead of marching to ED and all that, saying the same thing, mm. you do your press conference, go to the field, hit the field. If you have problem that, okay, democracy is in danger here, mm. under threat, go to the field. Mm. So like what's stopping so them from sitting like a gentleman? Doing bhaag, joro yatra, go mm. and say like democracy, bachao yatra, something mm. like that, if mm. you want to do. Mm. And go and try to convince people. If you are able to convince them, Fine, but if you're not, that tells you that your assumption was absolutely wrong. But then go to the people and tell them. Hmm. In parliament, use a, every opportunity to show that you are right. Hmm. But you're not able to do that. Instead of becoming a disruptive opposition, hmm. you have to basically change that image into a constructive opposition, hmm. which is seeking accountability from the government hmm. on issues concerning the people, hmm. not some individuals. All right, thank you so much for that discussion, yeah, DK. You, um, that's all we have for this episode of Polygraph. Please join us next week for the next episode. But before that, there's a small appeal uh, that we'd like to make to you. At The Print, we believe in non-hyphenated journalism, uh, high-quality, fair and questioning journalism. Our exceptional ground reporting is something we are very proud of and encourage reporters to travel across the country to tell, their story, uh, to tell stories that no one does. All of this, of course, comes at a huge cost to encourage us and support our work. I request you to uh, please opt in for a paid subscription. You will be able to see the process on our screen and can follow the link in the description uh, of, uh, of this video to do so. We are also launching a host of exclusive benefits for uh, our members like priority passes to our webinars and uh, our on-ground events, an opportunity to get your article published on our Your Turn section, some specially curated newsletters and so on. So please support our work and click on the link in the description below to subscribe. Thank you so much and thanks for watching Polygraph. Thank you.